Welcome back to Runiverse. I'm Andrew, and in this video I'm playing Nexus. So this is an early version of a homemade trading card game. I did pick up this starter set here on the Game Crafter. I'm not sure if this same version is available or will continue to be available because I know the creator is making progress, making changes. But you can see the really nice card back here. And this Blitz deck comes with a blue versus a red, and they are Blitz style, so they are half decks. There are some modified rules for Blitz, one of which is to start with three cards in hand, but as you can see, I've chosen to keep five cards, which is the normal hand size. So if that ends up being too many, that is on me. You've also got half-sized decks, so we might see that we go through these decks a little bit quicker than otherwise would occur. I also didn't see in the rules any penalties for going first, so I'm going to be adding a penalty, which is that the first player can't attack. So I don't know if that's for the best or intended, but just felt like something should be as a penalty. And again, this is a work in progress. You can see the rules cards here that come with the starter set, and all the rules are on these four cards front and back. So I'm just going to get started. So each of us has started with a starting unit, and you can have a lot of flexibility with what you want to start out with. After talking with the designer, it seems like these are probably recommended for this format here. So we got Grapple Gearoid, and it has an ability that when it's placed in one of these side positions as a recruit, which is not going to be the case since he's going to be our leader. So we're not going to be able to use that ability, but he's got 7,000 attack. Well, again, we won't be attacking this turn. I'll get pick up my opening hand and draw a card for turn. So one thing, we currently have an empty level zone. This is where you can play cards to be used as resources, and how many cards is in your level zone is important because it indicates the maximum number of cards you can play per turn as well as what level of cards you can play. So I think I'm going to put this card into my level zone. This is a weapon that I haven't found super useful so far, and I won't be able to play it until my second turn anyway, and it will cost my full allotment. So in the top left, you can see it is level two and it has a cost two. And I just don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to put this into my level zone. It's just going to be a resource now. And now I could flip this to play something, but I actually don't have anything I can play. I have this card, which uh, costs two and has a level of zero. So we could play it. it has no level requirement, although we are level one now. But we can't pay the two cost because we only have one card. And we can only put one card here per turn. We also have the Starbind Voyager. She has a cost one, which we could afford, but she's level two, and we only have one card in our level zone. So we are cut off from being able to play her either. What we do have are a couple level zero and cost zero cards, but since we're not attacking, we would just be showing our hand and inviting our opponent to attack us. Although there is a card limit on how many you can play per turn, but I think I'm gonna hold off and just pass back. So we'll see if we can get a little action going on the red player's turn. We're definitely going to want to put something into our level zone. Fortunately, we only have two red cards in our hand. I kind of want to start out with a red card resource, but I also kind of want to keep both of these. I'm going to reluctantly put this card into my level zone. It's a neutral card, so it doesn't generate a colored resource. But I think that's okay, because the cards we're playing don't actually cost any resources, so we don't have to worry about that. So if you play a card and you pay a resource, at least one of those resources has to match the color of the card. In this case, the cost is zero, so we don't have to pay anything. And we're going to put this unit out. He has a 5,000 attack, and the other effects on that card aren't really going to help us out right now. And now we have five positions where we can put a recruit. And I think I'll just put him here. And that is kind of planning ahead for based on the attacking system. So on this card, you can see where a card can attack and from where it can attack. So from his position here, you can see that he'll be able to attack the four cards here, 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 or here. Those four positions, he will not be able to attack these two positions. And I will say that this little chart is probably the hardest thing to remember so far. Definitely think if there's a playmat of some kind, having icons that indicate where they can attack would be beneficial. But we can kind of do things in any order in this game. I'm going to go ahead and play another unit. This is basically the same guy, but in generic. So the Lancer Warden is also just a 5,000. 
And you can see that it has a plus on it, but that plus isn't gonna matter when they are recruits in play, based on my understanding, because any unit can boost another one, which is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna have an attack with this battery carrier. The Lancer Warden is gonna boost it first, so that 5,000 getting added to 5,000 for a total of 10, and this attack is gonna go against the leader directly. And since 10,000 is more than 7,000, which is the Grappler Geroids attack, we're gonna have a hit. They're gonna take one damage, which means revealing the top card of their deck. And it actually does have some effects here. So down at the bottom in that black section, you can see an auto burst ability down one target recruit. Unfortunately for the blue player, all their recruits are already downed. All that's left is their leader, so that effect won't happen, but that plus 5,000 does happen. So it's going to give plus 5,000 to the Grappler Geroid until end of turn, and then this card goes into their damage zone, and that is one out of six damage. Now again, 10 damage is the normal value, but for the Blitz, we're going to play to six. Now we'll finish that attack. Now they did a plan, the red player, to attack with the Steel Rust Crusher, but 7,000 is less than the 12,000 that they're now up against, but I think that's okay. I don't think there's any downside to attacking with your leader because the leader can't get hurt even if they lose the battle. So we're going to attack because we have a chance of hitting a trigger type of card or burst of our own. So we're going to, when we do a leader attack, we get to do a boost check. So we're going to reveal the top card and it actually does have a boost here. So that is going to be another Burst effect, again, the black section says we get to draw one card, and we're gonna get plus 5,000. So that's gonna bring the crusher up to 12, and that means it has a high, a, a tie, so it does hit. This card also gets added to hand, the boost checked card, and that's another damage for the grappler gear ride, so they're gonna do another damage check. This one has no triggers, and I'll Something unique here is that this card actually goes as damage to their hand, but to indicate the second point of damage, this card gets flipped face down. So now face down card in the damage zone is two. With that, they're one third of the way toward winning. Although in Nexus, attacking does not necessarily end your turn. So let's check the new cards that they've added to their hand. And I think they'll hold on to them. In fact, I just realized I cheated because they were only at level one because they only have one card in their level zone, they could not have played two cards. So it's a great strategy, but you can only play as many cards as you have level. So I'm gonna rewind that unfortunate cheating and let's put this back and let's put this back on the deck. So they've only, they only took one damage. I won't redo everything. That actually is a good example of messing up one of the basic rules of the game that makes it uh, kind of different and unique. I kind of like that scaling of how many cards you can play and a bit of an algorithmic increase. So on turn one, you can play one card up to level one. On turn two, you can play up to two cards of level two, assuming you're adding to your level zone, so that would add up to four levels total. Turn three, you can play up to three cards of level three for a total of nine, and on turn four, you can play up to four cards of level four for a total of 16. I have not seen a level four card, um, but that's interesting to think about, and the maximum number of levels you can have is four as well. So back to the blue side, they've taken one damage. That power boost does go away. Draw a card and get that Stargate Guardian that we saw off the trigger. And let's see if we can get some more stuff going this turn. I think we will play a Drifter Stinger as a resource. Get two levels here, just keep it blue so we don't have accidentally cut ourselves off from playing cards we wanna play. And now we can play two cards of up to level two. I think one thing we'll do its first time this game is we're going to relay. So we're going to play this recruit, but we're not playing her as a recruit. We're going to relay her as our leader. So her cost is one. So we are going to have to pay one by flipping it face down. These reset every turn. Her level is two, which means we can play her because we have two levels. And we're going to put her on top of the grapple gearoid to make our leader now have 9,000 attack. She also has an ability. It can be used once per turn, but only if she is our leader, which she will be. Unfortunately, we will not be able to pay two more resources because we've only got one left. But maybe next turn we can do that. So I'm going to put her here, and now it's going to be harder to hit us a little bit. And we'll hit a little harder as well. We can only play one more card, and I think I will. I'm going to go ahead and play my own Lancer Warden. I'm going to play a little bit defensively, and we're going to attack this Lancer Warden. 5,000 versus 5,000 means they actually 
kill each other. So those are both taken out. And then we will attack with our Starbind Voyager, 9,000 against 7,000. We'll do our boost step and no boost there. So this card just gets added to our hand. Sorry, that wasn't the boost step, that was the check step. But the red player is now going to play the Spin Guard Slither. It's level one, the threshold they meet, cost zero. And uh, it actually has this Sentinel ability and it has this automatic a little tag with the blue ability means it's triggered by something. I think the wording is a little bit unclear, the fact that you can play it as an instant, but that auto ability means it is triggered by the incoming attack and he gets to place it. He does have to discard a card that matches his leader, so we'll go ahead and discard that battery carrier. And one target adjacent unit can't be hit until the end of the battle, draw a card. So in order to use that, he's gonna have to place it adjacent in one of those three positions. So we'll just put it in the front and now the adjacent unit can't be hit, so it won't take any damage, and he gets to draw a card. So no damage goes through, and I think we'll just go ahead and end our turn. Actually, that card that we got on our check step, the Hydro Golem, uh, might be just what we needed. So it's level two, which we meet, costs one, so we can pay one, and play that maybe just right into the front row. And we'll go ahead and attack with it as well, because we can do all this stuff in what order we want. So attack with 10,000 against 7, and kill that Sentinel. And then end our turn. So the red player is the one who's got a bunch of cards in hand. Let's see what they can do. We haven't taken any damage yet. So I'm going to be a little bit aggressive, and I'm going to play this Morph Mobius. So this is basically the Hydro Golem, but in red. Level 2, it costs 1, so we actually do have to pay with a red resource. Let's go ahead and make a red resource and then pay it for the turn. And we are just going to play it. So we could put this as a relay and level up our leader to 10,000 attack. I think I'm just going to put it here. And I'm also going to play a Lancer Warden, just the basic 5,000. And we're just going to put it here in the back. We're going to use that as we attack with a steel Rust Crusher with a 5,000 boost, so a total of 12,000. We're going to attack the Hydro Golem, and that will, uh, we do do a check step with that, and no effects. So just add that to our hand, and then 12 will kill the 10, and deny the blue player of some cards in play. And then our Morph Mobius can hit for 10 against 9, and that will trigger a damage, which yields a boost. They get to draw a card. They get 5,000 until the end of the turn. Add this to their hand and flip this into a second point of damage. But the 5,000 power won't matter because we have played two cards. We're level two, so that's all we're doing. And pass back to blue. Okay, so they get to ready or stand up or up a Starbind Voyager, ready to resources and draw a card. And now they're at two damage to zero. She's got six cards in hand, but I do want to use this ability. Maybe I'm being greedy, but we're going to pay two resources. I think I want to keep a blue. So I will put this Lancer Warden as a resource and pay two to use her ability, which is look at the top two cards of your deck. Call a level two or lower unit to an open zone. And we got two options, so we'll take the one that is bigger. I put it here. The other one goes on top of our deck, which is nice because now we know we have this burst coming up so that was a pretty effective use of her ability but we only have one resource left but i guess we could use its ability so we could pay a blue resource to put the top card of our deck into our level zone that will give us a fourth level for next turn without having to pay from hand and yeah let's uh let's do that so i'm gonna oh but then i lose that burst we just put there so maybe i won't kind of want to use that resource anyway and let's actually put it over here so that it can attack the Lancer Warden. I haven't actually played any cards yet, so I just used her ability. So I'm going to play this Leaping Dragon Frog. Costs one, and uh, it's going to be a 9,000 attacker. We're not using that ability this turn. Instead, we're going to call a Drifting Stinger to the back, and that way it can boost. So we're going to make a 14,000 attack against the 10,000. Take this out. 7,000 against 5 to take this out, and then with our leader we can attack with a 9,000 against 7,000. So we'll be hitting, we get our burst that we knew was there, so it's going to be plus 5. That won't matter, but we can down something. So I guess that didn't matter in the first place. Um, this does go to our hand though, and now we have 
I guess that burst didn't matter at all. I was thinking we'd get to draw another card or the bonus power might matter, but that's okay. It's gonna be one damage. Check for a burst. There's none, so that'll just be a damage. Red player is down to not much, but they're still in the lead. And the red player is actually gonna play their copy of Starbind Voyager as a resource, because they're not going to level up to level two. They're gonna skip straight to level three. Or, I mean, this is your level, but they're for their leader, they're going to relay directly up into level three. So you don't have to do step by step. We're just gonna jump from one up till three. You can't go down, so you can't relay from a level one into a level zero, but you can go up or stay the same. So we're gonna become a Stargate Crusher, Stargate Guardian with 12,000. We have to pay two for that. And now it's gonna be a lot harder for them to damage us. And we'll go ahead and pay our third for our own frog. Not sure where we wanna put it. I think this position's fine for now. A relaying does count as playing a card. We could actually play one more card though because we're level three, but we don't have anything for zero resources. But we could actually, we're planning to have the frog hit the gearoid. So we could actually put it here and that way it's safe from this boosted frog next turn. So let's do that. I'm actually gonna attack with my guardian first, my leader, 12,000 against 9,000. Let's just go for damage, do a check, no trigger. So we just add that to hand and deal 12,000. It's going to be another damage. No trigger here. So that goes into their damage zone face up. So there's three damage. I was hoping for a power boost to go onto the frog so we could make another attack. But if we did attack 9,000 versus 9,000, we would do a damage to her, but the frog would die as well, which we don't want. So let's just have the 9,000 kill 7,000. Card we drew is limit zero. It doesn't have a level, but it's cost two. So we can't afford that, so we'll pass the turn. So we get all our resources back, up all these cards, and draw. It's tempting to use her again, just for free cards, but two resources is steep. But uh, yeah, no, let's pay it. So let's pay two and check the top two cards of our deck. We did get a level two unit, so we can put that out. And the other card goes back on top, so we know we're not getting a burst next. We are getting a nice card. And then I'm going to play a Drifter Stinger as a resource and spend two to play a Stargate Guardian. We know we're getting another one next, so the question is maybe we just pump her up so that she's harder to hit. Or do we want more attacks this turn? But we might not be able to make that many attacks anyway if they hit a defensive check. So yeah, let's just put that on our leader. Go ahead and make that attack for 12 against 12. No boost. So they take a damage and they got a Stargate Guardian as well off the top. So no boost there, no burst. But uh, again, so this one goes to hand and this one gets flipped over to become now two damage. Which means five plus nine, we can boost the fro Dragon Frog up to 14 and make a second attack against 12. They take another damage. This time they do get a trigger, so it's going to be plus 5,000 power, and they can stand one target recruit, which doesn't do much on defense, although you can actually boost defensively. So if you want to, like for example, if I did not use this Drifter Stinger to bump up my Dragon Frog, I could save it up, and then when this is attacked, I could pump it to five plus 5,000 on defense. So that could be relevant to stand a unit on defense, but because the frog isn't next to the guardian, it doesn't actually matter. So this card goes to become their third damage, tying up the game, and I think we will just let the dragon frogs trade attack into that. Nine kills nine to deny them a little bit of attacking power. So this will clear, up, draw, and ready the resources. So let's be ambitious. We're gonna play a Stargate, Stargate Guardian for red and have them Actually, dang, I'm gonna pump it up. I don't wanna throw it away because 12 against 12 would kill this attacker. So let's bump it up by five and see what happens for that damage. So that is a burst, which says one target unit gains plus 5,000 until end of turn. So they can bump up their leader by five. And then this gets added to their hand because they already have one face up damage, which now becomes face down. This is something I'm actually unclear on because now these add up to 17. This is at 17. 
Does that mean these die? No, because that damage didn't occur until the attack had already gone through. So these guys are fine. The question is, can the red side do two more damage this turn? I think they can. So they're gonna play another card as a resource, kind of running out here, but that is their fourth, so the last one. And they're gonna play the Blazing Sword, which says limit two, so a little bit different. These weapons have limits instead of levels, but based on the, so actually that brings up the question, I don't know if there is a level restriction on playing them. If you can play this, I guess their cost is two, so you wouldn't be able to play it earlier than turn two anyway, theoretically, with two resources in your level zone. But anyway, uh, the rules didn't cover a limit, but I believe it's just number of uses it has. So if you read the text, it says you can activate it once per turn to equip it to a target adjacent unit and it gets plus 5,000 and damage plus one till end of turn. And when the card attacks, this card gets limit minus one. So I assume when it's at limit zero, it will be done. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I don't know what equipping looks like, or whether it stays in its position or if I actually move it over freeing up this spot. But since it only lasts until end of turn, I feel like it's just a boost effect. So this is now up to 17 and it has damage plus one, which speaks for itself. So now we can attack 417 against the 17 there, get our check step with no boost, add that to our hand. And now 17 against 17 is going to hit for two more damage. So unless there is a heal involved, Unfortunately, that was their other Sentinel. Or actually, I think, yeah, they have both their Sentinels in damage for the blue player. And this goes to hand. This becomes a six point of damage. And in Blitz, six is lethal. So as you can see, this is a kind of a familiar game. If you've played Card Fight Vanguard, it looks very similar. You've got your leader that's leveling up, although normally your Vanguard would be in the front. This is the leaders in the back row. I think the range is a little bit hard to remember what position can attack where, but otherwise I think it's pretty cool getting to play stuff on one side to avoid getting attacked by your opponent's recruits on the other side. The resource system feels like magic, but it also feels different in this type of game. I haven't seen that combination before. And having this be not just resources, but also a level indicator indicating how powerful of a card you can play. So for example, again, this Hydro Golem has level two, but only costs one. So you can't play it until you have two resources, but it only costs one of those resources. And the number of cards you can play. So even though you have a bunch of cards that are maybe a zero in your deck, like this battery charger, you can't just play a ton of them all at once because you're limited by how many levels you have, even if it doesn't cost any of those resources. And getting to level up the way you want. And actually, I just realized this, this is a big mistake. Whenever you do level up, or you relay, you actually are supposed to draw a card. So that was a huge mistake on my part. Both players should have been drawing a couple more cards, especially blue player would have had two more cards drawn. Although they ended up with a bunch of cards anyway, so I don't know how much that would have changed things. As you can see, the decks were getting small, but I felt about right for this Blitz starter format. Again, a full deck would be double the size. And you can start with any leader you want. You don't have to start with a level one. You could start with a level zero, giving yourself more level up options. You could start with a level three. Now you won't be able to level up nearly as much, but you get to start with the card you want in play. Uh, relaying up in level lets you draw more cards, but you also can't attack with a card if its level is lower than your current level. So if you start with a level three leader, you won't be able to attack until turn three at least. So you're missing out on those attacks. And because leaders generate check steps, that adds cards in your hand as well by attacking with your leader. So you're foregoing a couple extra draws by starting big. So it's an interesting decision point as well, which I think adds a lot of cool deck construction flexibility. In theory, at least, you have to see a much bigger card pool before you start making those decisions. And this is a game that I think this is all that exists so far. So if you have any feedback for the game, I'm sure the creator will be checking out the comments. I'll make sure to have a link to whatever version of the game is for sale at the time I upload the video and then theoretically keeping that updated if he keeps me updated. The art is super cool, so he is the artist as well, so I didn't really mention the art so far, but you got to appreciate that cool, colorful art style. I think probably, I mean, I'm a big fan of jellyfish and octopus type stuff, so the Drifter Stinger is probably my favorite. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more cool games like this and others. Subscribe so we can get more subscribers, and bye.